Hi, good afternoon, everyone. It's Rory here from Auto Entry. Thanks for joining this afternoon. Um, just so you're aware, the, uh, this afternoon session is just based around um, how you use Auto Entry as a as a business itself. Um, so what we'll be covering today is uh, invoices and receipts, both from a purchases and a sales point of view. Um, and then, of course, what I'll show you is how to invite other users in. Um, I'll go through the pricing. And of course, if you're not really using the software and want to give it a go first, I'll also show you how to set up a trial. Um, I'll start with the trial, nice and easy, because we're already on the home page. So, because AutoEntry is a cloud-based software, so you can always access it as long as you have the internet. Um, so just come to AutoEntry.com. We've got a login option up here in the top right. If you want to give it a go first, trial it out, just come into the website, come to small and medium businesses here, click into there, and then you'll have the option to try it for free. The trial account is actually a full working account. So everything I show you today, you will also be able to give a go yourself. So there's no restrictions um, in terms of testing it out. But if you've already got an account or once you've set up the trial and you're ready to log in, just come into the website, go to login in the top right, and then it'll bring you through to a page which looks like this here. So mine's a bit messy, mine's a bit busy, it's a demo account. Um, but the idea here is um, showing you can have as many companies in your account as you like. There's no limit whatsoever. Um, it also doesn't impact the cost as well. So whether it be um, you have multiple entities that you want to add in, you can do so. Maybe it's just one company, nice and easy. Add company button up here in the top left. Really simple web form. Just add your company name in, hit create company, and it will populate it onto this page. Once you've done that, it will show as not integrated. So if you are using an accounting software such as QuickBooks, Zero, Sage, anything like that, um, we can integrate into it. But don't worry if you're not using uh, a software like that. You can also download all the data as a, a CSV or Excel file. To do the integration, just click on the cog on the left-hand side. Opens up a, a company settings page, if you like. Um, nice, useful feature to be aware of. If you're not registered for VAT, you've got that tick box there. But for the integrations up here in the top right, click into there. And then you get a list of all the softwares we integrate into. So a key thing to note here in this list, it's not just cloud-based softwares. It does also connect with desktop solutions, such as Sage 50 and QuickBooks Desktop. They all basically work the same way, however. Um, so all you need to do is just hit connect next to the relevant software. And then just follow the steps. It takes about a minute or so. If it's cloud-based, just log into your account as normal. It will then automatically kind of populate the company name you're connecting to. And for your desktop solution, slightly different, click on connect, and it's just got the steps there. All you have to do is just download the sync app. It's free to download, free to install, but if you do get stuck with anything, do let us know, more than happy to jump in and help you out. We don't charge for support or training at all, so we're more than happy to do a screen share and kind of guide you along the way. What that integration is then doing, um, once you get a nice tick there, what that's doing is pulling through your chart of accounts. So you'll have all your customers, all your suppliers, all your nominal codes, VAT codes, things like that. Also, if you're using any cost codes, tracking categories, and in certain software's project codes, those will also pull through. But once you've done that, you're basically ready to start uploading into auto entry. So click on the company name. You then get your different folders depending on the type of documents you're using the software for. As I said, this one today is just focusing around invoices and receipts, and that covers both purchases and sales. So there's multiple different ways of uploading the documents into the software. Just click on the upload button here. And at the top, we have a unique email address. Every company you add into auto entry gets generated a unique uh, email address, which you can customize in company settings as well. So if it is quite a long-winded name, you can shorten it down or abbreviate it. And the beauty of that is if you get anything like an Amazon order or Uber receipt, or even if you're just scanning them in from home and you can email it from the scanner, you can just forward that email address, that email into that address, and then we'll be able to pull it out from there. It doesn't matter if it's in the body of the email or an attachment, we do pick out both. And we'll also pick out if there's multiple invoices or receipts in one attachment as well. If you are scanning them in from home, if you do have a lot of paper copies, you've got this big gray box here to drag and drop all your files in. This is really useful, especially if you've got like um, a large amount, because there's no limit on how much you can upload at a time through this gray box. So if you've got kind of a bundle of invoices and receipts, maybe there's a few till receipts as well, just scan them all in 
and with your receipts you can put four or five on a4 bit of paper and upload that as well the software will be able to separate them all out for you and they'll also be able to detect if it's a multi-page or a single page invoice as well so you don't need to upload those separately the third way, probably the most popular way, um, especially during the current climate, is we have a mobile phone app. It's completely free to download. Um, it's really simple to use. Just download the app. You can search for it, just auto entry, either on a Google Play Store or on the Apple App Store. Use the same login credentials as you would do for the desktop. And all you have to do is open up the app and take a photo of the receipt or the invoice. Once you've taken that photo, it automatically creates a digital record for you and uploads it straight in your account for you as well. So if you are quite prone to maybe losing the receipts if you're traveling around, don't worry, the software will create that digital record so you will be able to come back to it later. We do actually also have a fourth way of getting data into the software. It's not so much an uploading tool. Um, it's, we call it document fetching. What that actually gives you the ability to do is, it's really useful for like phone bills, maybe building supply companies, gas companies, things like that, is if you have to log in each month or each quarter, to download your invoice. Um, you can actually connect some of them to auto entry. So when they become readily available, we'll be able to pull them in for you. So to give you an example, just give you a quick um, show how you do that. Come to integrate here on the left, other integrations here at the top, and document fetching. Just click on open, add supplier. And see, we've got thousands in here. So I, I won't bore you and go through them all, but for example, if it's like a phone bill, O2, you can connect to those here um, and just give you another idea for building supply companies got likes of Travis Perkins there's thousands in there um, have a search through them any kind of requests as well if you don't find one in there do feel free to let us know because um, we're constantly updating it as we go um, but yeah it's really nice to save you having to uh, log in yourself and download it but regardless of how you get the data into auto entry they all appear in the same place under one roof which is here in your inbox so just click into your inbox and this is where you're able to see everything you've uploaded and what we've extracted so first things first we take out the date the supplier name the currency the net the vat and the total we'll also capture a vat summary as well if there is one on the document so we'll be able to capture that for you and then of course if you are using tracking categories and cost codes those also can be allocated here on the right when we take the supplier name from the document, we will instantly look for a match within your accounting or bookkeeping software if you're connected. Um, so of course here we've got TNT Express. And if we see that account in your software, we'll be able to pair them up for you. It doesn't have to be an exact match. We can suggest similarities. So uh, don't worry if it's like a, a Tesco Express receipt um, and you just have the supply account as Tesco, the software will be able to recognize that they're pretty much the same. So that way you don't have multiple supplier accounts for one supplier. If it is a brand new supplier, you haven't created, maybe you've never purchased them before, you've never created the supplier account in your bookkeeping software, that's fine. It just leaves it blank. All you actually need to do is just click on the drop down and hit add contact. That will then actually create the supplier account here in auto entry, but also do it for you in your accounting software too. So you kind of having to hop back and forth between them. Once you've done that, you just simply need to allocate a nominal code. I'll just come back to this one. It's grayed out and I'll show you why in a moment. But you just need to allocate the nominal code. Very first time round, just tell us what it is first time. You get that remember button pop up there. If it's always the same, hit yes. You'll never ever have to do it again. Um, so that's where it will save you a lot of time in the long run. And of course, I've got quite a lot of TNT Express invoices on my screen. Once you do one, it will automatically code up the rest. So again, you won't have to do them individually. And that's also the same for the VAT code as well. And then once you're happy, just click on that publish tick here. When that's green, it means it's good to go. Click on that tick and it will appear in your accounting software for you and then job done. If you're not using uh, an accounting software or maybe you don't want to have to click publish individually every single time, you might want to publish them through in batches. You've got these boxes here on the left, just select those. Or you can actually select them all from up here. Go to actions and then you got publish, but then you also got download here too. If you need to view the invoice, maybe you have no idea what it is, you can't remember because it's maybe the end of the month you've come in to look at it. That's fine, you've got the view option here. 
allows you to actually go in and see the copy of the document you've uploaded and in more detail the information we've extracted. You've got a little key up here in the top right so you can zoom in and out. Maybe if it was an upside down photo, you can also change it around, make it easier for you to view. Um, but yeah, so it's nice, easy image there. Everything on the left can be extracted as well if need be, or edited, sorry. So if you want to change the description, add in references, you can do so. Um, things like credit notes and invoice numbers are automatically detected. In certain softwares, you'll have the option for purchase order matching. Once again, you're tracking categories, cost codes, project codes, whatever they may be. And you've also got billable customer again for certain software. Just before I move down to the totals, really useful tool I see a lot of users um, using is this blue truck here. Um, actually allows you to customize the software by the supplier. So if you click on the blue truck, opens up a new tab. And in here, it allows you to uh, tell us a bit more about this individual. So for example, if you know every time you upload a document from TNT Express, you need to break down the invoice line by line. Just turn it on from here. That way the software will be able to read every product or service that's shown on the document, allowing you to break it out into several nominal codes, product codes, whatever they need to be. You've also got your default currency, default payment terms, descriptions, things like that. And another really popular feature is the auto publish. So that basically means it saves you that job of clicking that tick. So once you've uploaded the document into auto entry, we'll then be able to extract all the data and then we'll be able to publish it straight through to your accounting software for you. So again, it's really useful if you're out and about on the road, perhaps. Um, if it's a regular suppliers, just saves you kind of having to come in and double check anything. So going down into the totals, we've got net, VAT and total, of course. If you do deal with multi-currency, so um, if you're maybe traveling abroad and you go to upload the receipt, you don't need to do anything differently. The software is designed to pick up the currency for you. So I'm just going to quickly change this one manually. Um, but for example, if this was in euros, the software would detect that. It would give me an exchange rate, which is backdated to the date of the document. So it doesn't matter when you've uploaded it. Um, we will backdate it by the date on the actual receipt or the invoice. And then you, of course, have your base currency just below. I'm just going to change that back, otherwise I'll forget. And then we've also got markers paid as well, which is quite useful, um, kind of helping you reconcile it with your bank statements. Um, and you also see we've got a remember button there too. So any kind of changes I've made, I can always teach it to remember so I don't have to do them again next time. But for this case, I know this invoice has been paid, so I'm going to mark it as paid, which payment account it's come from. And again, once I've made one change, I can teach payment settings for the supplier as well. And then once I publish this through, it will then match the invoice up to the bank transaction. So really useful if it's already appearing via a bank feed, but it's also available when it's still really useful if you're not using a bank feed, because then if it's got the bank feed, we'll of course pair them up, reconcile them together. Without the bank feed, we'll just simply create the transaction for you. And at a later stage, if you go to import the bank transactions, it won't allow for a duplicate. So down here we have our line items. So if you've asked the software to capture those, they'll appear here. So you'll have all this information here filled out. And then here you can allocate your individual codes. But once again, you can teach it to remember. And it will be remembered based off the, um, the product or item description or service description, whatever it may be. So again, once you do it, once you don't have to do it again. I'm just gonna tidy this up. You also got a publish button down here, really useful if you're just getting started using the software, if you just need to use it one at a time, uh, kind of build your trust up, um, then you can do that way. So when you hit publish, it simply moves you on to your next invoice. But after a while, you will start seeing, if you use the remember functions, a lot of it will be pre-populated for you. And then once you've published them through, you don't need to do anything else with them here in auto entry. Because um, when they're in your accounting software, what we then do is we move them out of your inbox, and move it over to your archive folder here at the top. So it keeps it neat and tidy. But then the other um, beautiful thing here is we'll create an extra digital record. So a copy of the document will go into your accounting software, but we'll keep an extra backup here for you. It is HMRC compliant, so we do store it for a minimum of seven years. So you don't need to worry about keeping hold of the document on your end. So if you're trying to go a bit more paperless, it's a free useful tool for you to use. You've also got rejected folder. Uh, it sounds quite negative, rejected. That's what the red triangle is here. Um, so you've got a couple of them dotted around. Um, actually allows you to be a bit lazy. Um, 
because if you're unsure if you've uploaded something, just do it anyway. The software is designed to reject the duplicates. So it will be able to tell if you've already uploaded it or not. Maybe someone else has typed it in manually and then you've gone to publish it through from here. It will also flag up and say you've already got this in your accounting software. So again, it's not gonna create a duplicate in your accounting software too. Um, you can actually click on the red triangles and it gives you a reason as to why it's been rejected. So in this case, there's a tax code missing. Um, but instead of you kind of having to scroll up and down trying to find them, just click into rejected. And there's a, a really simple reason column here. So you can always see why. Um, quite self-explanatory, but always worth noting. Um, we do read, a we can read handwriting. The only difference with it is if you, it depends on the individual's handwriting. Um, so a general rule of thumb I go by is if you can't read it, the software might not be able to, but give it a go anyway, because it then might reject and say, might not be able to read the date, for example. And then all you need to do in that instance, to move it to the inbox, add in the date, and then you're good to go. And that's really it um, for invoices and receipts. So that actually covers both purchases and sales, as I said before. The only difference you will find with um, sales is it'll give you customer names instead of supplier names. That is it, that's the only difference. Um, and just before we move on to other aspects, just another kind of useful point here is supplier statements. That's used, if you ever kind of have to sit there with a bunch of purchase invoices and need to tick off um, which ones you have and double check which ones you don't have. Just upload the supply statement into auto entry. You can do that via email or directly through the upload button there. Just go into your inbox. You'll be able to see the supply statements you've uploaded. Once again, just come to the blue eye, click on view. Similar to the invoice where you've got that split screen with the image. But the difference here is we go to reconciliation at the top. And all you actually have to do is click on auto match here in the top right. What that will then do, it will go through absolutely everything you've uploaded um, for your inbox, your archive, everything like that. And then it will give you these big green match ticks there. That means you know you've got them. If you've got a couple missing, what you can then do is filter the tab up here. So just click on unmatched and then you'll be able to see which ones you haven't got. You can then go back to the supplier and request those. You can also create the document there. You can also choose to ignore it as well. Maybe if the, you know it's already missing and, and you just want to complete the reconciliation for now, maybe the balance has been brought forward so you can choose that. Um, and you can also manually find the match as well. Maybe if you're already aware, um, things like the invoice number or the dates don't match up to what's on the statement. But that is it for spy statements. It's just a really simple tool letting you know which documents you have and which ones you don't have. Cool, so the very last bits then before I move into the credits um, aspect and the pricing, um, of course, is you can have many um, colleagues or clients using the software as you like. There's no limit whatsoever. Um, what you can also do if you have invited a lot of people in, you've got the activity tabs here. So you'll be able to see who's done what, when they've uploaded documents, how they've uploaded it. And you'll also be able to download the original files. So going back to when I said the example, if you've lost the receipt, you might want to download the original file. You can do that within activity or you can do it from all activity here. To invite users in, all people up here in the top right, click into there. We've got add people button up here in the top left. You just need to invite them in via their email address and then it will send them an email letting them know that you've invited them in so they can create their own password, their own login. Once they've done that, it will then automatically direct you through to this edit page here. And then here's basically like your parental guidance for the software, just allows you to set who can do what within the software. So tick the boxes of um, what you want them to be able to do and leave the boxes unticked what you don't want them to be able to see and do. Um, if they're not ticked, they won't even know those folders exist either. And as I said, there's no limit, there's no cost for adding them in. Um, so it's really useful in that sense. In terms of the pricing then, we work on a credit system if you're not familiar with auto entry um, already. So one credit is basically one invoice. I'll show you how they're used because we don't restrict any of the features. There's no kind of pay extra for each tier. Just certain types of documents might cost different volume of credits. You can always access this in your account. So I'll show you how credits are used. Up here in the top right, click on your name, go to account settings. 
and you've got usage tab up here. Can you see here how credits are used? So one credit per invoice, doesn't matter if it's a 10 page invoice, it's still one credit. Um, that's the same for the line items as well. If you're asking us to capture all of the line items, all the detail from the document, it's just one additional credit in total. So that doesn't match if there's five line items or 500 line items, it's still just gonna be two credits in total. The cost per credit, the more important part, under subscription and billing, you can buy them in here. So you control it all on your end. Um, so you can come in and buy credits as and when you need to. So your first option here, purchase credits in bulk, pretty straightforward, just click into there. Um, it's said 25p per credit, you can either buy one at a time or you can buy 500 at a time, doesn't matter, it's entirely up to you. If you are buying a larger volume, um, the subscriptions do work out slightly cheaper, but you, it's up to you which option you go with. So that's the bulk buy, 25p per credit. I generally say to most people, if you're buying over kind of 30 at a time, um, probably go down the subscription route. Reason being as well is the most popular way of using auto entry because there's no contract involved. You're not tied in for any length of time. They're simply monthly rolling. So click on add subscription. You'll be able to see kind of some of our standard packages in here. Um, and yeah, where there's no contract, it allows you to freely chop and change your package whenever you need to. So if you're having a busier month, you can always increase your package. And if you're having a quieter month, you can always decrease it as well. If you don't use up your credits, it doesn't matter, they do roll over. They roll over for up to 90 days. We always use your oldest credits first, however, to avoid them from expiring. Um, but in the event you might have rolled over too many credits, you're just not getting through them each month, that's fine. You can pause your, your subscription. It saves you topping up the account each month and you can slowly work through all those credits. Once you've used them all up, you can just simply come back in and re-add a package whenever you're ready. If you run out of credits, not a problem at all. We're not going to bump you up. We're not going to renew early. Um, we simply just give you an overdraft facility if you wish. So um, allows you to go over by 200%. So in the event you go over as well, you're only paying for what you've used at the same rate you bought the credits for. So you're not being penalized for using it. And other than that, there's no, uh, there's no other charges in the software. So um, all training and support is completely free. Um, so if you did want more information um, or just needed help in hand, maybe getting set up and started, and you've got this blue bubble down here in the bottom right, you come into here, send us a message. And this is manned almost 24 hours because we've got colleagues in North America and Australia. So when we're not in the office in the UK and Ireland, they'll jump in and help you out as well. Um, and we've also got a help center up here if you don't wish to speak to us. And in here, you've got hundreds of different training videos. So of course, I appreciate there's probably bits I've gone through today you might not need. If you wanna revisit anything, you can just come straight into here. And all the videos will jump straight to the point for you as well. And on top of that, there's thousands of different articles and guides, which are regularly being updated once a week anyway. Um, and there's also a contact number as well. So you will be sent a recording of this webinar um, and there will be a phone number as well. So if you did need to uh, speak with us on the phone, give us a call um, and we can jump in and help you out. But other than that, that is it for this afternoon's kind of overview webinar. This one's a bit shorter than uh, usual. So if you did want to kind of have a more detailed, structured demonstration, maybe tailored to your business as well, let us know. We, we do offer one-to-ones. We do have a team dedicated for that. Um, and they will be able to kind of help you get started if need be, or just kind of give you that extra information if you wish. There is a Q&A section on the meeting we're on now. So feel free to add any questions in there. I'll leave this meeting open for a couple minutes. So if anything does pop up, um, I'll answer those straight away. Um, other than that, if you don't have any queries and you're quite happy, thanks for your time this afternoon. Um, as I said, if you need a hand setting up the trial, just go to waterentry.com. Go onto the website and you'll see the banner there um, allowing you to get started. And it's a full working account as well. So no restrictions. For everything I've done today, you'll be able to do yourself.